give me the microphone just a little bit. Okay. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Stefan. I'm a Ruby developer from Vienna, Austria. And besides doing high level uh, programming in Ruby, I also really like to do some low level stuff and play around with old hardware. Play around with old hardware like this. And recently, I played around with this specific device. So who of you knows what this is? Hands up. OK. I suspect these are the older ones in the audience. <laughs> For the younger ones, this is called a data set. And it's a storage device for home computers that was actually quite common back in the 80s because it was way cheaper than floppy disk drives. And you used it to save your data to audio cassette tapes, like this. And you could even buy tapes with pre-recorded data containing games, and applications, mostly games. <laughs> so if we take such a tape and with data on it and put it into our stereo, try to listen to it, what will it sound like? Well, so this was real data actually written by a Commodore 64 some weeks ago in my lab in Vienna. And it may have reminded you of the sounds you get from other devices back from the 80s. Analog modems, fax machines. So why do these devices all sound similar? If you want to encode bits and bytes into audio, you need to employ some kind of, um, some kind of modulation technique. And all of these devices, fax machines, modems, and the data sets use the same technique. It's called audio frequency shift keying, AFSK. So this is what this talk is about. And this is why all these devices sound so similar. So AFSK gives us this. But how do we get back our data? How do we decode this back into bits and bytes? Well, let me show you. This is a short segment of the complete waveform and at a very high zoom level. And it exactly represents one single byte. And to decode this byte, we have to look at individual pulses in the signal. So a pulse is a very short segment where the signal starts at zero, goes down to the bottom, up to the top, and again to zero. This is a pulse. And if you look closely, you might notice that there are several identical pulses in this segment. They all have the same length. And there's another group of pulses, also identical, but a bit longer than the first ones. And finally, a third group, only two pulses, which are even longer again. So these pulses obviously come in three different lengths, long, medium, and short. And now, if we look at these pulses in pairs, we get various combinations like long medium or medium short. And each combination has a specific meaning. Long medium, for example, is start of byte. And it tells us that a byte is going to start. Medium short is a one bit. And short medium is a zero bit. So hooray, we got some bits, we found some bits. Maybe we're done. Well, not quite. Two more things. First of all, I don't know if any one of you noticed, but in fact, we got nine bits instead of only eight. And this is because there's one additional bit for error checking, a parity bit. So for now, let's just assume that the data is correct and we don't need this error checking, so just ignore it. And the second thing we have to do, the remaining eight bits are in reverse order. So the most significant bit, the bit with the highest value, is coming last. And if we want to decode them back into a normal decimal value, we have to reverse them. So if we reverse those bits and have the most significant bit at the front, then we can simply do some math. This gives us 145 as a decimal value. And that's it. We have successfully decoded a single byte of audio frequency shift keyed data 
written on an audio tape by an actual Commodore 64. I think that's success. So, being a Ruby programmer, I obviously also wrote a Ruby script that automates this process. Uh, it generates lots of interesting debugging output, also uses enumerators. Check it out on GitHub, and if you have any more questions, just ask. Thank you.